Good morning and welcome to another Breakfast with Unity. So, uh, first off, I wanted to mention, on the last episode, we were trying to, uh, we, we wrote a script to um, activate a mono behavior um, on a button press. And I actually made an edit to this thing uh, because uh, Patrick Chinowith mentioned what we actually wanted to derive from. So, um, basically, there is uh, another class called Behavior. And behavior is actually where um, enabled comes from. And behavior allows you to actually drag in other things, too. So, like, if you go to camera here, we can now drag in, say, an audio listener into... Wait, this is the wrong scene. Hold on. So you can drag something like an audio listener into the components to activate now, which is awesome. Um, Cinecat also mentioned that uh, that object is is you can get any asset component type, and that's that's fine. But we needed an asset component type that had uh, the enabled option, and our problem was um, behavior, which that's great that has enabled, but it only applies for scripts and not for built-in components. Um, and I tried component, which is evidently too low a level, and object is one lower level than that. And then, um, and then Patrick mentioned that there's a behavior in between there, and that's actually where where the enabled comes from. So that's awesome. Um, thank you very much. Um, and uh, I might rename some of these later, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. So um, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to just do a new scene. Don't save. And. Um, and actually, I'm going to base this on let's base this on our laser dot scene. I'm just going to duplicate this and throw it into. Well, we'll just throw it here for now, and we're going to call this uh, laser beam. And so we're going to go back to our laser dot scene, and we got this little laser dot thing that goes. It's really cool. So now we want to actually have like some particle effect that represents the beam going towards the object. And we're going to do that with, with particles, and we're going to play around with some things, and hopefully it'll look pretty good. Um, we're going to try and fake as much as possible and have it kind of look like a real laser beam. Now, you don't actually see light in, in a vacuum. You can't see it. It doesn't reflect off of anything, right? But we don't live in a vacuum. We live in a world with a lot of different things in the air and stuff. And so typically if you see a laser beam, what it's doing is it's actually reflecting off of dust particles and motes that are in the air. And um, and so we're going to try and simulate that by setting up a uh, a um, particle effect to that effect. So um, we're going to create a particle system, and uh, we're going to just use the default particle again for right now. Though I am going to switch this to additive immediately. So we've got an additive particle thing. I'm going to put this into the particle system. So these are now additive, and color them here for um, lasering. So they're red. Sweet. Um, now, uh, what we want to do is we want to actually have this thing projecting outward and we want it to, it's, it's tough to explain, but I, I'm going to show you what, what options we have and we're going to pick one of them. So first we're going to make it forward and I'm going to, um, where should we put this thing? Let's put it somewhere that we can see it really well. So let's first, uh, move our first person controller back a little bit so that we have a longer range at the start. If we just hit play right now, we're just going to see... Particles spouting. That may be too. Fast. Yeah, this will be fine. Wherever I'm at here, somewhere like that. Um, and we're just going to take this particle system and I'm going to put it near the camera here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put it in the camera for right now. And uh, and so let's position this so that it's at zero 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 for the moment. And then um, maybe move it uh, to the right a little bit. We'll do that in a second. So, so here we, here we are. Here's our particle emitter, and um, and we're going to tweak this quite a bit because this, it doesn't look anything like we want yet. So um, we've got a few different options for the emission shape. Um, most of them kind of have an emission center. So like sphere comes from the center, hemisphere. Um, uh, the center, but it's only outwards in half the directions. Um, cone again has kind of a centralized circular point where it comes from, or it can be, or it can be a single point if you set the radius low um, or the angle low or something. Box um, just is in a box again, and all these are moving forward, and we really don't want that. Like what we want is to kind of simulate dust particles drifting in and out, and so there is one more option here. It's called mesh. 
And uh, by default, it doesn't really help us that much because it's just set to a vertex. Um, it actually can be useful for certain certain linear effects to just be vertex. It means it's just a single point. Um, uh, if you have no mesh set, it will just be a single point. Um, you can also basically do that with sphere and, and setting the values to very low. But um, but what we're going to do is we're going to change this mesh to one of the built-in meshes. We're going to change it to the cylinder. All right, and now we can see this this operating a bit differently. Now um, we're going to have to reorient this. Um, so let's do an eight ninety. So. So we have it coming from the, the cylinder, but it's coming from the vertices. We actually want it to come from the edges. And so we occasionally get, um, actually, is triangle better? Yeah, triangle might be better. No, no, it's not. It's not going to be enough density. So I think we're going to have to go with edge. And, um, and so now we have kind of more of a tube that we can work with, and we can actually scale this thing to change the geometry of this. So we're going to scale it out a bit, and we're going to scale it um, down in the, it's uh, so like 0 0.25 and 0.25. And we'll make it 6 meters long, and we'll offset this thing now so that it's uh, starting right about there. All right. So it still doesn't look very right, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to make it so that the start speed is negative, like negative one. All right. And that's still, still way too fast. So let's do the start speed of um, negative 0 0.1. All right. This is looking closer to what we want. Um, now we're going to need to make these things considerably smaller. So the start size we're going to put at 0.1. And now we, you, you can see that we have particles that are basically coming in from the sides of the uh, of the uh, emitter. Is this the right way I want to do it? Looks like it's kind of not emitting much, much from the center. Let's try doing triangle. Does that work better? Yeah, triangle works better. Okay, so we're going to use triangle. So so this um, this now we have um, particles that come in from the sides, and we've got kind of an even distribution in there in its tube. If we go into the game view, we now are moving towards what we want um, on this particle effect. So, um, so I'm actually going to move this in just a little bit. So it's more like coming from the, just like our eye. It's an eye laser or something. And um, what are we going to do with this? So, so we have this. You can see that they're kind of drifting outside the bounds. So we're going to kind of closely tie their lifetimes to. Um, to the um, to the way that this actually operates. So you'll notice that the things that were on the outside are kind of going in. That kind of gives us a little bit more forward motion, which is good. And then and then the ones that are coming from the sides come in from the sides, and that's good too. So is this actually pretty well distributed? Yeah, it looks like it. So so let's look at the lifetime, and let's make it shorter. So how long does it take to get from one edge to the other for the ones that are actually coming from the edges? It takes about a second. So let's make it duration of one. And start lifetime of one. Actually, let's not make the duration one. Let's make the duration five. I don't know. Uh, so now we've got it so that they're coming in. Let's, let's do two. Okay, so it doesn't look like they're going outside the bounds now. And, um, and we're going to need the emission rate a little bit higher now to counteract that. So let's make it um, let's make it uh, double as high. Let's make it actually let's make it twenty five. So now we've got um, pretty good density again. And we're getting closer to what we want for a laser. Um, so now the key with lasers is um, you're going to have the most intense particles near the center. And since we know that the particles are coming from the outside, we're not using random direction. If we were using random direction, then this all goes out the window because they can come off in any direction. But since we're not, things are coming in from the polygon normals. And since we're using negative, they're going the opposite of the normals and going centered. And um, we're going to want to make these things get brighter as they get into the center and dim as they get to the outside edge. So we're going to go for color over lifetime. And I'm going to do random between two gradients. And what we're going to do is all we're going to affect is the um, alpha, which is at the top here. So we can just, um, I'm just going to set the alpha at 50% on one of these gradients to be um, full. And then on the outside edges, it's not full. And so if we close this now, and then we do the other gradient, I'm going to make this one just a little bit different. We're going to make this one at 40% and at 
60%, and then we're going to make at 50%. And then what we're going to do is, here we're going to have alpha to zero on the edges, just like the other one. We're going to have an alpha of zero in the middle here. And this makes it so that we have a couple of points where the particles will actually show up in the middle. So now if we go into the game view, you can see that we have a much more convincing um, mode effect for the uh, for the particles. And, um, and so I kind of don't like the ones that are actually coming in um, at uh, the central angle. I'm going to leave them for right now, though. But yeah, we're, we're, we're getting close to what we want here for our laser effect. So if we actually go in-game now, I just want to see how this looks with our, with our laser. So it looks pretty cool. Um, it's not exactly hitting the laser, and that's because we're kind of offset a little bit. Um, and uh, let's just make it less offset. Let's just see what we can do here. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. So um, now in a uh, in a real game, what you're probably going to be putting this thing on, you're going to not have it quite as close to the screen. You're probably going to have it originating from a laser on a gun mock-up that you have. Um, so so keep that in mind. Uh, this is not going to look perfect, but we're trying we're trying for effects here, and we're trying to do it cheaply. Like we don't have to do anything special lighting. We don't have to do any any special stuff. We're just having the particles themselves handle in their lifetimes that they come in, fade out, or, or, or fade in, and it kind of looks like a real real laser. Um, we can increase the, the density if we wanted to, or we could decrease the size of the particles or do both. I'm going to actually do both. Um, let's do the start size of point, uh, zero 0.05, and then let's make the particle density a bit higher. Let's set to 50 here on the, on the rate. And, um, and again, I kind of don't like those caps. You could you could fix this by doing um, a special geometry, like you could actually build some geometry that doesn't have the end cap. But um, as I don't, I don't want to turn this into cooking with Blender or breakfast with Blender. Um, I'm not going to be able to show that. So um, so one way we could fix that is we could just literally move the particle system back, um, which isn't the best solution, especially if you wanted to have like a multiplayer game or something. But it does it does fix that that erroneous thing. But I kind of want to add a little bit more life to these things anyway, so let's see if this will actually partially fix our problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, um, what is it, force over lifetime. And we're going to do this, and um, hmm, this is a weird thing. So if we just set a force of x5, yeah. That's what I thought it was going to do. Yeah, it doesn't matter if we do global or world. All right, so we need random vectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do random between two constants. And the constants are going to be negative 1, negative 1. Okay, that's way too much. Let's do negative 0 0.1. Negative 0 0.1. And we're not going to affect the z. Um, and then let's do velocity over lifetime. That might actually be helpful too. So let's go 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0. Point, and nothing, just just nothing there. So now these things can walk a little bit too. Um, this might have affected some of our effects a little bit. So let's go back to where we can see the whole thing. Let's uh, pull the uh, pull the particle system forward just a little bit so that we can see the emission at the back that we don't really want and see if this helps any. So it has helped a little because now they've got a little bit of, of motion in the sides. But we can also probably do limit velocity over lifetime. And let's do separate axis. And we're going to only affect the Z axis. And what we're going to do is we're going to dampen it. Well, it's already pretty dampened, isn't it? Yeah, let's just dampen one. So now these things, hmm, there's still not a lot of life to them, is there? I guess we're not getting as much of the force as I wanted to. Let's, if I make this like one, and one, and one. Weird. Why is that not 
really changing anything. Oh, I'm using the wrong axes because this is not Z forward, this is Z up. So, so what we want to do is we want to actually make this zero. We want to make the, so we want to limit in the Y direction. And that means we want negative one here, zero, um, one, zero, and negative one. Let's see how that looks real quick. This is going to be exaggerated, or one, zero, and one. This is going to be exaggerated a little bit. This doesn't work at all, does it? So I think this dampening is working. A okay, it works a different way than I thought. So we actually want the opposite. There we go. What, what happens? What is dampen? Okay, well, let's keep the dampen at one. And um, let's put these now back to more sensible values. Negative 0.1, negative 0.1. 0.1 and 0.1. There we go. That is a lot better. It looks a whole lot better. Um, but now it seems like they're still getting a little too fast on the velocity here. So I'm going to actually just make the start lifetime 1.5 here. And well, yeah, it's certainly better. Um, these still kind of go out of bounds just because of the nature of where they're positioned, but it does look better at least even if you're even if you're staring at the emitter here. We might be able to t tone that down just a little bit more again by uh, by setting the scale down a little bit more. Go point one and point one. Tighten the beam up a little bit, and then we have to additionally make the lifetime shorter if we're going to do that, or the start speed smaller. So let's do lifetime point seven five. All right, counteract the density, we're going to make the emission rate higher. That's actually kind of interesting. Now we have, now this is almost working to our favor. Like if this was at the front of a, of a, of a projector, it would actually kind of look like it's brighter at the front. Um, and I think that's all we're going to do. So, so this is, um, this is obviously something you can play around with some more. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, you can see how you can work with particle effects and to create more fancy looking stuff. I'm going to just bring that thing back in just so that it looks good again. Um, again, the best solution to this would be to use a mesh that doesn't have the uh, the base, so it only has polygons on the sides. And that way you get an effect that looks like this, which I think looks pretty solid, actually. So, so anyway, um, I like it. I like it a lot. So you've seen, um, I didn't, yeah, the skull laser being good. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's a wrap. You guys have a good one. And, um, if you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Dragfire. Support the show on Patreon. We really, we really appreciate your support. And thank you very much. You guys have a great night or day or whatever it is. It's morning. I don't know. <laughs>